That is now back-to-back -back games in which Bukayo Saka, Eddie Nketiah and Gabriel Martinelli have scored. That is now back-to-back -back games in which Martin Odegaard has been largely unplayable. And Arsenal are now seven points clear at the top of the Premier League. And when I say seven, I mean seven. I feel like it's that situation. You know when you see a big scoreline when the classifieds are read out and they have to put it in brackets and spell it. I'm going to do it. S-E-V-E-N. They are seven points clear at the top of the league after a really highly entertaining game. Fair play to Brighton because they made a fist of it. At 3-0, it looked like it was going to be a New Year's Eve parade. But they fought hard and their young front line did very well. But yes, it was 3-0 after 47 minutes. It was 1-0 after one minute. The tackle from Thomas Partey on Tarek Lamptey and the build-up for the opening goal that was scored by Bukayo Saka is a thing of beauty. People will always talk about the, uh, the more aesthetically pleasing things, but they will not acknowledge the, the grit and the determination. I find beauty in the more dark side of the game. The, you know, the, the slightly more... The slightly less celebrated. I loved Ashley Cole clearing the ball off a line. I love a 50-50 challenge. I love a clever piece of gamesmanship. Ricardo Carvalho-esque, for example. And the way that Thomas Partey wins the ball back, it's synonymous with everything brilliant that Arsenal are doing. They are truly exceptional. And I am so full of admiration for them. It hurts. I'm going to put my cards firmly on the table here. I think Arsenal are going to win the league. I'm also going to put my cards firmly on the table here. I desperately hope that they don't. Of course I do. I'm from North West London. I live in North West Six. I'm surrounded by Arsenal fans. My cab driver cousin is an Arsenal fan. I cannot live in a world where Arsenal win the league. I love the fact that it's been two decades since they won a title. This cannot end, but I'm afraid that it is going to. They are just so good. And you know what's really frustrating? Whether they win the league or whether they don't, this has been a fantastic season for them. Like even beyond the results. It's just been so fun for them to watch. And when you think about what they've gone through, the late Wenger years, the Emery era, uh, the Arteta era, the Lundberg game, it wasn't fun for them. You know, that team, Arsenal, and their various different managers played some turgid stuff. But this is different. They are playing with such swagger. And the fact that they are the youngest team in the league really must enhance the sense of fun. You can see that there is real harmony, real unity within the squad, and that is being replicated on the terraces. Do you know what? I was live doing this game on Twitch, and I was talking about what the Arsenal fans have managed to achieve and their contribution to this, to this win. Obviously, when you talk about teams doing well, you focus on managers and you focus on players, and I think that, of course, you do that. But I choose to believe that fans impact results spectators in football stadiums have a direct impact on results. And the way that Arsenal have remodelled themselves, you know, the Emirates, since they moved, Highbury was a really pat uh, passionate and partisan football stadium, quite intimidating, quite aggressive. They moved to a new stadium that wasn't that. And at one point, it was the quietest stadium in the league. Their fans have galvanised, they've unified, and they've created this Ashburton army. And I think fair play to them. You know, they've got a drum, they've got almost choreographed songs. They dress the same, which is fine, I suppose. But it works. And I think it's really easy to be sneery about things like that. But I think the volume that is being generated and the happiness that is being generated from the stands is being reciprocated by the players. And it started in that first game. Do you remember when they played Palace on the opening day of the season? And it was that Saliba song. Da -da 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 -da. It's continued from then on in. So there is a real happiness around this team. And I suppose it's been a long time coming because the early Arteta era was dreadful. The late Wenger era was dreadful. Emery, their fans, did, despite the fact that they got to a European final, their fans didn't seem particularly enthused with him at the helm. And now this young team who look like they're going to win trophies, this feels like George Graham's early years all over again. And they were good today, Arsenal. Ultimately, they were just more ruthless. Maybe they were a bit luckier in attack. I think that Brighton did very well. I've, I've, I know that I've been told at least that the second Mitoma goal that was ruled out was ruled out correctly. <sighs> Not for me, Jeff. I know that. I know I'm wrong. I know that it was ruled out correctly, but I just don't really agree with the rule. Um, 
But Arsenal, despite being a bit luckier and whatever, they oozed class today. They were so good. And most notably, the jewel in the crown, Martin Odegaard. The way that he made that fourth goal for Gabriel Martinelli with a glorious pass was simply a thing of beauty. The way that he rifled home the goal early on. The goal that never happened. Martinelli in the first half. Martinelli linking up with Odegaard. Odegaard with a nutmeg. Imagine if that had ended up in the back of the net. Odegaard is silk. That is all I can say. I'm not articulate enough to do him justice. I'm not clever enough to do him justice. So I will simply say... Martin Odegaard is silk. And do you know what? I quite like him. Did you see a moment? I don't know if you were watching the coverage, but at the end of the game, Odegaard went into the Arsenal fans. A horrible away fixture, by the way. Making Arsenal fans travel down there on New Year's. It's a liberty, really, isn't it? New Year's Eve. And they're stuck at liberty. Anyway, fair play to the Arsenal travelling support. Uh, Martin Odegaard went in with his shirt. He's just put in a performance like that and he has found a kid. Like, you know, he didn't throw it. We've seen issues, haven't we? He, he made sure that he placed it delicately into the hand of a kid who'd uh, travelled down there to support him in Arsenal. So fair play to him. Um, and look, there's a lot to like about this Arsenal team. There's a lot to admire. But I think Odegaard is probably the player. I think he's probably the one, isn't he? Like, I think that... Look, I'm, I'm going to go extreme here, but I think that this there's something De Bruyne about him. You know, the way that he plays a pass. And in a few years' time, you never know. If he wins a few trophies, you never know how we're going to look at him. But Arsenal have won, and crucially today, they have won at a stadium where they never win. I think Arsenal have won only once before since Brighton got promoted. They don't win at the Amex. They've got a terrible record against Brighton generally. And they have managed to do it. Yeah, it's their second win at the Amex since Brighton were promoted in 2017. Like, that really is a statement victory for Arsenal. And look, it went Arsenal's way. The goals came, really did come at the right time for them. But they also looked dangerous whenever they got into the final third in that first hour. And look, they've done, they've done it really well. And at one point, it looked like it was going to be a stroll for Arsenal. You know, when Eddie and Ketia made it 3-0, it looked like it was over. But fair play to Brighton. They attacked with real intensity when I think others would have chucked in the towel. And had it actually been made 4-3, it could have been a different it could have been a different uh, scoreline altogether. But ultimately, Martinelli's strike set up by that sumptuous Odegaard pass was the crucial one. Um, so now, seven points clear. Do you know where we are? We're entering, and it's early, but... In the next three games, I think we're going to know if this Arsenal team are capable of winning the league. In the next three games, Arsenal play Manchester United, Tottenham and Newcastle. Newcastle in a couple of days' time. If they come out of that relatively unscathed, say they come out of that period, those three games, nine points, say they come out with five points, maybe six points, one defeat, five, six points, something like that. I think they're going to win the league. I mean, I think they're going to do it anyway, but I think a lot of people will be saying that they're going to win the league if they come out of the next three. I'd say within a month, when the referee blows a full-time whistle at Goodison Park, early February, we will know who's going to win the league. Arsenal will have either capitulated by then or they will have extended the lead over Man City. Manchester City are going to be worried about all sorts of things now. Doubt, the lack of any sort of cushion, the Champions League, the pressure really is on. So do you know what period we're in now? Even though we are only in January. And it was actually Ferguson's comment, wasn't it? Ferguson, when he said this, was talking about Arsenal potentially blowing the league. Arsenal are entering squeaky bum time. That's what this is. It's squeaky bum time for Arsenal. Are they going to be able to navigate this really rocky terrain that they are about to embark upon? Or is it not going to go their way? But they are seven points clear over Manchester City. 2023 promises to be so exciting for Arsenal. Everything that's thrown their way, they get over it. The World Cup, they're fine. Gabriel Jesus injury, they're fine. The Amex, where they have a terrible result, they're fine. Losing to West Ham United in an intense London derby, they're fine. We're going to find out. Newcastle United at the Emirates. Really exciting. Um, I need to simply take a moment now to say thank you so much to every single one of you who've tuned into these videos it honestly means the world to me you've changed my life I'm so grateful to everyone who has subscribed liked these videos watched these videos I'm so grateful um, and I wish you and your loved ones a really lovely 
Happy New Year. 2023, I hope it's glorious for you. And thank you so much for all of the love and support that you've shown me over the year. Happy New Year to you all. Bye.